if there's any class that feels like they changed the least from Team Fortress Classic to Team Fortress 2, it would probably be Soldier. If you know how to play Soldier in TF2, then the fundamentals are nearly identical in TFC, and vice versa. You got your rocket launcher, you got your shotgun, you shoot the floor, and people die. It's all there. But unfortunately, these two characters never really directly interacted with each other in the comics. They were in the same vicinity as each other, if that counts. But no super cool soldier showdown happens in the story. So we're gonna have to do it right here. Pitting soldier against soldier, and game against game, to find some kind of a winner. But this is purely gonna be comparing the in-game stats, weapons, and abilities, and it's not gonna have anything to do with the story. We're also just gonna restrict this to default weapons. This is especially important for Soldier vs. Soldier, because the TF2 Soldier has so many unlockable weapons. Being able to pick and choose the exact right loadout for the exact right situation would provide a pretty huge advantage. Though at the end, regardless of the outcome, we'll still theorize about which unlocks would be the best. And lastly, this video is ultimately about comparing the evolution and changes of the character between the two games. Having it be a fight is a fun way to see the contrast between them, but it's also not that serious, alright? Okay. In the red corner, we have the next snapping assassin, the Screaming Eagle, the TF2 Soldier. And in the blue corner, we have the original, original user, the TFC Soldier. For the first round, we're gonna kick things off with the health comparisons. The TF2 Soldier has the second highest health in the game, only behind Heavy, with 200 health. But in Team Fortress Classic, the Soldier is tied for the highest health with both Heavy and Pyro at 100 health. And like the original Heavy, he has the Heavy Armor type, but with 200 armor points as opposed to the Heavy's 300. And the Heavy Armor type is the best armor in the game, which absorbs 80% of damage taken. So this would mean that, hypothetically, if both classes were to take a hit with a base damage of 200, the TF2 Soldier would die, and the TFC Soldier would live with 60 health and 40 armor to spare. In fact, with armor, the TFC Soldier effectively has 300 health, which makes him a lot tankier and very easily gives this round a TFC. Round 2's run speed is going to continue the trend of the classes having the same run speed between games. The soldiers are no different, with both of them having run speed of 80%, making this round a tie. Alright, so I've decided to condense round 3 into a bunny hopping and grenade rounds, because for the most part these are just TFC exclusive things, and I would rather get bunny hopping out of the way now rather than to put it in abilities, which seems a little bit unfair. And yeah, despite being a bug in the original engine, the ability to bunny hop was embraced for TFC, and is something all the classes in that game can do. You can kind of bunny hop in TF2, which can be useful for things like market gardening, but it's nowhere near to the same extent it is in TFC. And also, like every class in TFC, the soldier also has grenades. Four hand grenades and two nail grenades, which shoot nails at a 360 degree radius before they detonate. And it's also worth noting that these grenades can be primed and thrown while you're attacking with other weapons. And yeah, TFC does win this round by default, because, uh, it just kinda does. But that's the last freebie round. Now we're gonna see how things stack up when it comes to the actual weapons. But, uh, just before we get to those actual weapons, we still have the ability round. And both games do consider rocket jumping to be an ability of the soldier. Though I think I would argue that's more of an ability of the rocket launcher itself. But, uh, either way. And actually, in TF2, the soldier does have a passive ability relating to rocket jumping. In Team Fortress 2, the Soldier has a natural 40% reduction to his own rocket damage when he's blast jumping. So this means that by default, you could generally rocket jump about 4 times from full health without dying or being healed. However, in Team Fortress Classic, the Soldier does not have any self-rocket resistance. This means that he takes a lot more damage from his own rockets when rocket jumping. Though at the same time, because his health is effectively larger, he could also rocket jump about 4 times before dying. So by adding the self-resistance in TF2, they were able to keep rocket jumping feeling very similar between the two games. And that was pretty smart, I think. But if we are just looking at this purely on its own, the fact that TF2 has the self-resistance and TFC doesn't would still make this go to TF2. Not that it makes a ton of difference overall, but, you know. Round 5, the melee round. Do we, do we really have to do this again? We got the crowbar, for the fifth time, versus the shovel, which functions exactly like the majority of TF2 melee weapons do. The crowbar swings super fast, but with its low damage output, it takes about 2.03 seconds to kill a 100 health target where the shovel can kill in about half that time with only two swings. And I occasionally still get asked why I use a Heavy, who is the bulkiest class in TFC, versus a bigger spy in TF2, who has one of the lowest healths. And that's because the Heavy I use here has no armor, which means he only has 100 health, and essentially all the TFC Heavy's incredible tankiness comes from the fact that he has 300 Heavy armor. Without that armor, he's just as frail as a bigger spy, even in the context of his own game. And yes, the crowbar does still suck, even in the context of its own game. So yeah, this is what the crowbar stats would look like if it were in TF2, and just like all the other Versus episodes, yeah, the crowbar's not winning anything. 
Round 6 will be the shotgun round. And first off, yes the TFC Soldier does have both the single and double barrel shotguns. But second off, the single barrel shotgun is so worthless, we're not even going to waste time talking about it. So we're only going to be talking about the double barrel shotgun from TFC versus the shotgun from TF2. And in case you were wondering why this is called a double barrel shotgun in Team Fortress Classic, it's because in Quake Team Fortress, it actually was a double barrel shotgun. And once it came over to TFC, the model was changed and the name just kind of stuck. But anyway, this is another rematch from something we saw in Heavy vs Heavy. And in that video, I gave this round to the TF2 shotgun, but I've actually been kind of rethinking that a bit. The TF2 shotgun's max damage is 90 at point blank, which is about 65% higher than Double Barrel shotgun's max of 54. So it's much, much stronger at the shotgun's ideal range. In fact, the TF2 shotgun is even still stronger at mid-range. And the TF2 version even fires ever so slightly faster. So TF2 winning this seems pretty straightforward. But the Double Barrel shotgun has 8 shots as opposed to TF2 6, and it reloads significantly faster. But most importantly, like all weapons in TFC, it has no damage fall off. Both shotguns have bullet spread, but from long range the TF2 one is suffering from bullet spread and damage fall off. So for example from long range, where the TF2 shotgun is dealing very insignificant damage, the double barrel shotgun is actually still dealing a pretty solid amount. From the middle of Two Forts Bridge, where the double barrel shotgun took 2.13 seconds to kill, it took the TF2 shotgun 8.6 seconds. So in a way you could kind of think of it like comparing the short stops damage to the scatter guns damage. One is way better for close range, but the other is better for long range. And I think if you transplanted the TF2 shotgun into TFC, it would be a good weapon in that game. And at the same time, I think if you transplanted the double barrel shotgun into TF2, it would be a good weapon in TF2. Not necessarily well balanced, but still strong. The double barrel isn't as good at being a shotgun, per se, but it's still good. And I think if I had to go back to the original versus, I would probably call this a tie. Can I do that? Well, too late, I just did. This one's a tie. And for our last numbered round, we have the soldier's most important weapon. The round that could make or break the contest. The rocket launcher versus the other rocket launcher. Both rocket launchers hold four rockets at a time before needing to reload. But the TFC version reloads slower, with the initial reload taking about 1.4 seconds and consecutive rockets taking about 1.28 seconds. This means that it would take about 5.24 seconds to reload all four. Compare that to the TF2 rocket launcher, which can reload all of its rockets in about 3.21 seconds. And that's actually a fairly big difference in reload time. It's about 60% slower for TFC. But the TFC rocket launcher does hold more than double the maximum ammo, having 50 reserve rockets compared to TF2's 20. And the TFC rocket launcher also fires very slightly faster, though not enough to have any kind of huge impact. And much like the incendiary cannon in TFC, the rocket launcher's projectile speed in that game is slow by TF2 standards. I mean, rockets in TF2 are not particularly fast compared to some other projectiles, but here it took the rocket about 1.47 seconds to travel from one side of 2 Fort to the other. And in Team Fortress Classics 2 Fort, which has a nearly identical size and layout, the rocket took about 1.93 seconds to make it from one side to the other. And while not as slow as the incendiary cannon's projectile, the TFC's rockets would still be the slowest projectile in the game if they were in TF2. So that is worth pointing out. Uh, but before we get to the actual damage of these rockets, I just want to also point out that the TFC rocket launcher appears to have more knockback, especially on a direct hit. Though the exact difference is kind of hard to determine, uh, it's, it's just something worth noting, I think. So, both rocket launchers, of course, will deal a higher damage on direct impacts, but will also explode in a radius on surfaces. But the TFC rocket launcher's explosion radius is noticeably smaller than TF2's. Just by eyeballing it, I would maybe even say as high as 25% smaller. But the direct hit damage between the two rocket launchers is kind of comparable. In TF2, the rocket launcher has a base damage of 90, with 125% ramp up and 52.8% fall off, giving it a max damage of 112 and a minimum of 48. The TFC rocket launcher has a base damage of 100, but with no ramp up or fall off, meaning it could deal up to 100 damage from any range. Though like the rockets from Pyro's incendiary cannon, the damage is not very consistent. I've had direct hits range from as low as 85 damage to dealing the full 100. There's definitely a randomness factor here, so the vast majority of the time, direct hits would not deal the full 100. And because of that, for comparison here, it took the TFC rocket launcher 0.967 seconds to kill a 100 health class in two rockets, where the TF2 rocket launcher does it consistently in one rocket in just 0.08 seconds. And for mid-range, it took TF2 0.35 seconds and TFC 1.25 seconds, and from long-range, TF2 took 1.53 seconds and TFC 2.05. While hypothetically, at each of these ranges TFC could have killed in one rocket, 
it never did. And when it comes to splash damage, TF2's rocket launcher has more variables. It has both the explosion distance from the target, as well as the distance the rocket was fired from, with the absolute minimum splash damage being 24 from long range. But for TFC, the damage is only determined by the distance from the explosion. And using this relatively safe range as an example, the TFC rocket launcher's minimum splash damage was about 51, and an explosion to the feet of the target was dealing about 71 damage. Where for TF2, the minimum was 49, and a rocket to the feet did about 87. So the damage here is fairly similar, though TF2s can obviously get higher the closer you are to the target, but at that point you're risking hurting yourself. So while I would never say the TFC rocket launcher is bad, in fact it seems pretty powerful in its own game, it's also pretty blatantly obvious that the TF2 rocket launcher is just better. The projectile is faster, it reloads faster, it has a bigger explosion radius, and the high end damage is better. The best thing that TFC's rockets have going for them is the lack of fall off, which is pretty good, but it's not good enough to win this round. So the rocket round is going to TF2. But alright, who's gonna win the 1v1? In a fight to the death! Well, uh, pff, I don't know. Let's look at the pros of each class here. TFC has a much higher effective health, and also has a pretty solid range advantage due to the lack of fall off. And while the TF2 soldier is certainly no slouch when it comes to mobility, the TFC soldier can keep it up more continuously with bunny hopping. And TFC can also apply extra pressure with grenades. And for TF2, the list is shorter on paper, but obviously having much stronger weapons and better damage output is going to be very important when it comes to killing the other person. While TFC does have the range advantage, TF2 is a lot stronger close up. And when it comes to the rocket launchers themselves, like I said, TFC's isn't bad, but TF2's is solidly better. It's going to be a lot easier for TF2 to land hits with due to the faster rockets and bigger explosions. Now as far as their absolute best hypothetical times go, TFC could kill in two rockets, but there's so much randomness there in getting that 100 damage that I feel like it's kind of pointless to really even say that's a serious possibility. So for this we'll actually just be using a TFC pyro as a stand-in because we know it's going to take three rockets to kill. And in this example it took 1.73 seconds to kill, meaning that hypothetically the TFC soldier could kill the TF2 soldier in as little as 1.73 seconds. And for TF2 we could use a heavy as a stand-in because we know his health is more or less on par with the TFC soldiers. And the first time I did this at point blank range, I actually killed myself, but it took 1.67 seconds. So uh, if that counts, that technically gives TF2 the time advantage. But from a safer distance it took 1.75 seconds. And that's a 0.02 second difference. And without a doubt, if I was even slightly closer, the rocket travel time would be less, meaning that I could very easily get the time on par with TFC, if not slightly lower. So let's just call this even. But uh, let's be real here. Two soldiers fighting each other are not going to be going for a direct hit war. They're going to be primarily using their splash damage. It's what soldiers do. So what range do these two really want to be fighting each other at? While TFC does have the range advantage, I think that's mainly just going to come down to the shotgun. Even with the lack of fall off, you're probably not going to get much by shooting slow rockets across the map. And while TF2 does appreciate a close range fight more, the TFC soldier's higher health means you can still overwhelm him at that range even if the TFC soldier has a lower damage output. And honestly, I think health might be the biggest factor here. And that's why I have to say that I think TFC wins this one. a little bit of an upset, huh? But TFC finally claims another victory. And yeah, I think the fact that TFC can simply absorb a lot more damage before dying does push this over to Team Fortress Classic. This was still a close one, but after doing all the damage tests, I was always slightly leaning to TFC, and the more I thought about it, the more TFC seemed like the choice. And if I had to put a somewhat arbitrary ratio on this, I would say it's maybe like 60-40 in TFC's favor. TF2 could certainly win, but overall I do think TFC has a little bit of an advantage. For what it's worth, you could get a solid 25-ish damage from long range with a double barrel shotgun, where TF2 is barely dealing any damage from that range. And at close up, even if the TF2 soldier is solidly getting 90 splash damage per rocket, that still means it's going to take 4 rockets to kill the TFC soldier, where TFC's lower splash damage of about 70 is still going to kill the TF2 soldier in 3 rockets. And of course the TFC soldier can throw grenades into the mix to force the TF2 soldier into bad positions or to just deal extra damage outright. But again, it's nowhere near impossible for the TF2 soldier to win, but when you're going up against someone who has a very similar kit to you but also has 50% more health, it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle. 
But now, just for fun, let's theorize about what Soldier Unlocks would give him the most advantage. Technically, the direct hit would be the best in terms of raw damage output, but it also mini critting launch targets means you could also punish the TFC Soldier for rocket or grenade jumping. And if he bunny hops out of a blast jump, that would presumably still count him as being launched, and that would mean you could mini crit him just for that. And the same goes for the reserve shooter, which has the same stat of mini critting launch targets. So I think as a secondary, that would be pretty beneficial too. Or maybe you could use the gunboats to allow you to close in the distance faster while taking less self damage. Or the extra health from the battalion's backup could help a little bit. The righteous bison could be used to. Uh. Can't go wrong with the escape plan for melees, that could come in handy. But would having access to all of his unlocks push it over the edge for TF2? I'm actually not sure. I mean, just one mini crit from the direct hit is already doing half the TFC soldier's health, so hey, that could make the difference. But as it is now, we still have a victory for Team Fortress Classic. So which of the remaining classes do you want to see next? I'm thinking Spy vs Spy would be pretty cool, but you tell me. And as usual, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons like Varric, Captain Forex, Egox, Colonel, Probably Vinegar, Caponicus, Kelso the Pirate, Hillsman's Fox, Kyber96, Scout with a Name, Glump, Salt God, Lavi, Tope, Time Consuming, Man344, Nolan46, and Melodici. Alright, peace out dogs.